long-standing collaboration. Diego uh, got his PhD in the University of Santiago de, de Compostela in the group of uh, Vicente Pérez Muñozuri, uh, working on a number of, uh, well, a couple of problems I would say related to both chaos, uh, some. Uh, Especially this one here, but not of very high dimension, mm -hmm. and also pattern formation. Then later spent one year in the Institute Nolinear de Nice, in, in Nice, working on guided dynamics and, and, and biophysics with uh, Professor Valentin Pilinski. Then two years in the Max Planck Institute for the Physics of Complex Systems, working in the group of uh, uh, Dr. Holger Kantz. And then later, in 2006, has been in University of Cantabria, IFCA, Institute of Physica de Cantabria. This, uh, like ours, a joint center between the SIG and the university. And since then, I mean, has uh, kept working on some of the old problems, and we'll say later and so on, but has started a, a new line of research that is mostly what he will be explaining today, that is, uh, I mean, related to quantifying and the prediction and so on, with, uh, with uh, the important applications to, to geophysics problem, problems, in particular to meteorology. I, I, I will finish mentioning that he has uh, done some research studies with me, one at the University of Salamanca and two here at the former media, so he already knows yes. the house. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I, this talk is restricted to the level of vectors. Uh, when, even if we know and that uh, for prediction purposes you will use another vector types, but these vector types are similar vectors or uh, red vectors uh, are objects that we have investigated, but I will not mention them in this talk. I will restrict only to polyagonal vectors, just this small remark. And yeah, this, book, this work was in collaboration with Juan Malote and Miguel Angel Rodriguez. Uh, Ivan Sendra, who makes his PhD in Santander and is now in, in Cologne. And Mauricio Romero Bastida, who is a researcher from Mexico, who also has made a pair, a pair of studies with us. Okay, so we will start with the basic, basic concepts of Devon of Vector. Uh, uh, well, this is, if you have a time continuous dynamical system like this one, uh, Okay, you know that if you have a reference trajectory and you make an infinitesimal perturbation, this, then this infinitesimal perturbation evolves uh, according to this linear equation, where here is the Jacobian matrix. Um, the fact that the perturbation dynamics is linear implies that there exists uh, an operator M that uh, maps, say, your uh, perturbation at time t0 to a given time t by means yeah, of this op operator m. And probably many of you have read at some point in your lives the existence of a theorem due to Osledek where it states that there exists an operator m, m adjoint, okay, that uh, has some eigenvectors b that depend on time, here we are at time zero, and some eigenvalues mu. Due to the form of this operator, these eigenvalues mu are always positive, and this operator and these eigenvalues mu are related to the Lyapunov exponent by means of this uh, okay, logarithmic transformation. So it's quite. Uh, with respect, okay, I, I, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming that you are familiar with what uh, the open of exponents are, hopefully. Okay. <coughs> then, if you are familiar with the open of exponents, you can do at some time. So, so, so yeah. it is written this mu depends on, on, on capital T? Yes. Yeah. No. no? Well, t. Yes, mu depends. Well, mu depends of t. Yeah, but you make a limit that has a limit. Uh, yeah, sorry. yeah, exactly. Because of the, of the limit, this is this is dependent on t. And, um, yeah, it's not good, but yeah, yeah. yeah, you always make this. Thing. Okay, you yeah. go to the remote parts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're familiar with the mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So B should be evaluated in minus T in principle, no? C name what should be? B should be a tiny minus T, not at zero. No, no. Why not? Because what, what, what does B n of zero mean? Yeah, okay, so what does B n of zero mean? M of zero. B n B n of zero. Okay, is the is well it corresponds to this time zero. Yeah. The Bacon vector of but, uh, time yeah, zero. But is that autonomous system or non autonomous? Not in uh, okay, here I put it like uh, I put like a no, so it could be non autonomous. It could be so. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, at the end, I should maybe have written here uh, limit capital T to minus infinity uh, if I want to be more precise. Okay, what, what I'm sure is that at the given zero and t, this eigenvector and eigenvalues exist. And the, uh, the second values are, are, are possible. Okay, so if you compute it for a dynamical system, the level of exponents, you will not use this formula. You you have used probably this algorithm due to Benetti, where you, you take a set of perturbations and you periodically optimalize them, optimalize them. And from this optimalization, you, uh, you get the level of exponents. Okay? So, what is not so trivial is that this um, basis that you obtain by the Benetti algorithms corresponds to the same basis that you obtain if you uh, compute the eigenvectors of this operator. Of course, I'm assuming already that we are the limit of t going to minus infinity, and that you have perturbations that have been evolved since the remote past up to a time, say, zero, right? Okay, this set of vectors, okay, sort of, no? Um, okay, here is the, the, what you obtain in the, in the Rosler system, just to illustrate what these what this vectors mean. I mean, these vectors are obtained as a byproduct of computing the level of exponents. So, if you are familiar with this oscillator, it's a three dimensional system. Here's a piece of the trajectory, and at some points, I'm plotting the, the three vectors. Each vector corresponds to one level of exponent. For instance, this first level of vector corresponds to the positive level of exponent. The second vector corresponds to the null level of exponent. This, is, this, is, this system is autonomous. So it implies that one of the elements of exponents must vanish. Okay. And the third power element vector corresponds to the third element exponent. Why am I calling this element of vectors backward? Okay. This back, these vectors are called backwards because if you take one of these vectors at time uh, zero, okay, here, and you integrate power in time, the perturbation, you will recover the Lyapunov exponent corresponding to that Lyapunov exponent. So, okay, this is not surprising. That's why you obtain the Lyapunov exponent from here. So, well, I'm a little bit confused because now D is at the time of the second argument of M. Yeah, now I'm going... In the previous transparency, B was at the time of the yeah, first argument of here M. Here I'm going from minus infinity or minus yeah, D but, to but, zero. Yeah, but then B should be B of minus T, no? No, no, no. Now, now I'm... Now, this is an operator. That takes an, and takes a perturbation from the time of the, of the second argument to okay. a time here. So okay. this is like an inverse mm -hmm. of the going back. Going back and, um, okay. Okay, this is uh, yeah, it's called backwards. But maybe, maybe if you will not be uh, have not realized that if you take one of these vectors that uh, at some time zero, and you integrate forward in time, then uh, all, all your perturbations will collapse on the most expanding direction. Then if you, you integrate forward, your uh, your perturbation will grow with an exponent that is lambda one, I mean the, the larger level of exponent. So the level of exponents are not recovered if you, if, you, if you integrate forward, only if you integrate back. That's why I refer to this again, uh, level of exponents like or even vectors like power level of vectors. Also, if you are uh, much uh, I mean, attentive to the mathematics, you have to realize that these vectors actually depend on the scalar product because when you use the Benetti's algorithm to compute the level of exponents, you are orthonormalizing. And what you normalize, you are selecting some given metric to orthonormalize. 
And in fact, here, this element join here will be, uh, okay, for the usual identity matrix, a symmetric matrix, this is the, tra the transpose matrix. But if you, take, you select a different uh, metric matrix, then the adjoint operator will not be the transpose one. The transpose matrix will be another one. So these vectors depend on the, um, on the matrix, or on the, if you wish, on the norm. B and are the eigenvectors of M squared, basically. M and M. Okay, right? Yeah. So which end do they pay on any pages? Yeah. I mean, this is the definition of M and M, right? But this could be one. Then M, M is defined by this. Yes, and then you have a matrix. M times M star is a matrix. Yeah. They are defined in the matrix. This is an adjoint. Yes, yes. And then you, you have the M, M, M star. Mm -hmm. This is a matrix. Yeah. Did you find it in parts of that matrix? I think in vectors. This is taking value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they are unique. Yeah, they yeah but, but the adjoint depends on the matrix. So yeah. if the adjoint operator is not always a transpose matrix. The transpose matrix for the usual identity matrix. Usual but you are free to choose a different uh, matrix matrix. I mean to, to define uh, norms or to define in a different way. I mean, yeah, you have, well, I didn't write the... I mean, we see that you have M is defined by the so Yeah, M is perfectly defined. I mean, there's no... M is, what is M star? Then? M is star. M is star is a joke. Okay, I should not. Is it transposable or conjugate? No, that's right. With respect to the basic construction. Okay, I've got this, something like... You use the matrix. M delta U. M delta U. At some point, you are going to define this like... Well... Usually you, you you can say something like this. I mean, there are two versions of the theory going forward and back. I will mention later. That needs a norm. Yeah, defines a norm or, 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 or a scalar product. I mean, a definition from the scalar product. And, and this definition uh, matters. So the uh, again the some space is defined by the vectors are are intrinsic, but the the level of vectors themselves are. are are not, they are dependent on the norm. So this, this can be uh, solved if you work with the characteristic or so-called covariant level of vectors. Okay, this is a special set of vectors that's, that has the property that if you take the, this vector, this level of vector, gn at time zero, and you integrate forward up to time t, then you get another vector that is uh, pointing in the same direction that the uh, vector at that time. What does it mean? Well, okay, notice that the level of vectors only indicate a direction in this space. They are not uh, the size or the orientation is is, uh, is free. It's, uh, you can you are free to choose. It's a, it's a choice. Not the orientation. Yeah? Well, the orientation means the, the sign. Mm -hmm. The direction. Yeah. The direction. <laughs> so. But this is implied is that if you, yeah, that, that's why they, they, they are having called covariant, because if you take the time zero and you integrate it, you get the, back, the vector at that time. This automatically implies that uh, the norm of a, of a vector, when you integrate on time, will increase with exponent lambda n, but, but, also, but for all values of t, real, either positive or negative. So if you go forward in time, the perturbation will increase with the uh, corresponding exponent, but if you go backward in time, the perturbation will decrease also with the associated exponent. Um, now, maybe with the, with the Roger system, we can better understand which is the, somehow the physical meaning. I mean, the first vector, if now I'm plotting this characteristic or covariant level of vector. The first vector is the same one I plotted before, because this is the one that you obtain with the ability is only simply uh, normalizing the, your vector. You are not orthogonalizing, so this is clearly independence of the norm. You don't, you don't use the concept of, uh, of orthogonality to, to obtain it. But the characteristic level of vector, now you see that it's exactly tangent to the, to the flow, to the direction of the flow. Uh, what is exactly what you expect? As I said, this, this system has a vanishing level of exponent because it's an um, uh, autonomous system. This implies that if you put a perturbation exactly in the direction of the flow, it will not, uh, the stream will not expand 
when they, they have forward in time or power in time. So this, this ex, these vectors pointed in the direction where, where you should expect, where you physically expect to, to do. I mean, here you see that if you obtain this ve the vector as a byproduct of the Benedict Sunway, then your second vector is pointed in a direction that if you integrate forward in time, it will expand with the first diagonal exponent. It will not recover the, the, the null diagonal exponent. However, if you go backward in time, this vector will, this perturbation will collapse with the trajectory and you will recover the, the vanishing diagonal of exponent. So, as I said then, I repeat, the backward diagonal of vectors recover the diagonal exponents only when you go backward in time, not when you go forward in time. Well, and these characteristic vectors are simply the eigenvectors of the Jacobian? Mm -hmm. uh, no. No. These vectors are, uh, no. I, I will not explain much the technicalities of how to obtain it. Maybe uh, there are more interests. Um, okay, characteristic level of vectors have both information from the, from the future and information from the past. Whereas back level of vectors have only information from the past. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I haven't prepared too much the technical details. Okay. We will go ahead. So even if these vectors are known from a long time ago, they will they were completely almost completely ignored in 2007, where uh, two algorithms appeared to were proposed to compute these vectors. One is this one, with Wolfgang Summers and the other is the Both of them in, in 2007. Uh, okay, in, in my simulations, I'm using this first method. Uh, okay, and I will not, ex but I will not explain now. How, how. Well, just one naive question. Yeah. If you were calculating the Ryapunov exponents here and the Ryapunov vectors using the traditional technique of uh, autonomization, or using this technique, Mm. For the eigenvalues, mm. I guess you get the same value, the same yeah, yeah, result. Exactly. But my question is, if you use these uh, covalent uh, vectors, do you converge easy, easier to faster to the right values? Because sometimes when you compute the output of exponents, you, you have to, I mean, mm. you have to integrate over a while, you know, well, autonomize yeah. several well, times. Yeah. Do this go faster since you are already taking? Well, the, this maybe they go faster. Then I guess you have. Prefer to compute them. And for computing them, you have to, okay, so to go from the remote past and to get information from the remote future. So, it's, so, it's, so it's a little bit okay. convoluted. Okay. If you want to know the details, okay, I said this vector, this oscillator term here gives you some backward level of vectors. There are a twin vectors of this one called formal level of vectors that are obtained by an operator that does this M adjoint M is also. The oscillatic theorem. There are like two versions of the oscillatic theorem. The one that goes to the past and from the past and the one to the future. And from this vector you obtain the and in this other version of the oscillatic theorem you have the forward vectors that are vectors that are obtained only coming from the future. This are called forward because mm -hmm. for this vectors for these vectors you only obtain the level of exponents if you go forward in time, but if you go backward. Then once that you have both set of vectors, the backwards one and the forward ones, you have somehow to um, Okay, and separately or in another way to uh, to grasp the information about sets mm -hmm. actually to to uh, intersect the subspaces mm -hmm. coming from all sets of vectors, mm -hmm. and then you, you get the, the true um, well, the characteristic level of vector that okay, will not uh, that I'm not explaining how to obtain. Then we uh, we have started also in 2007. We then we in, in, in the time we have been also. Um, Okay, seeing how to apply this vector to different situations, uh, I will talk a little bit about Hamiltonian system and delay systems. For Hamiltonian <coughs> systems, we found a way to optimize the integration I mean, because one of the problems with the, to compute these vectors are uh, uh, the memory of the computer commands because you have to store a lot of information. Um, and with delay systems, we also found a way to, to compute them. And quite recently, has appeared. A small simplification of the of the Wolfram Samuelson method, but it's, it will not save your time, but not not your memory, but can be more accurate. But can be can plays a role if you are playing with a big system with a lot of use of freedom. So just a bit to review but what is what is new. So I now I will forget the little vectors. Well, 
the applications, sorry, were, are, uh, are have been also, well, have been in the, the field of hyperbolicity studies in the sectors of uh, interest. Also, there's something called a solidic split in this perspective, in this direction of vectors, it's a solidic split. And so, uh, you may be interested in to know if these vectors are, if the solidic split is called dominated, and if you have independent directions or the their tendencies between these vectors or not. Uh, also, the problem of the, that there's something called hydrodynamic level of modes that tells you that in, uh, in many particle systems, like hard disk systems or hard spheres that, uh, that interact in uh, a gap, so that if you, if you compute, compute the, the, the level of vectors associated with the um, level of exponents close to zero, you have uh, a small uh, well, this, this response has zero, so the inverse, the level of time for this vector is, is large, so you, you can suspect that you can get some information about the measure that you the, the quantities that you measure in the macroscopic system from what you observe in this uh, kind of level of uh, vectors. Okay? But this is only a, it's not completely proven. Also, I will center on this part of the problem of extensivity at the university classes of spatiotemporal chaos. We have also tried to propose uh, some ways these vectors could be useful for forecasting in, uh, well, in, in meteorology or in other systems. Uh, in fact, quite recently appeared by some researcher of MIT appear where they use these vectors for assessing the, the performance of ensemble forecasting. And also, I have detected some renewed interest on some low dimensional problems that are now being revisited because maybe these vectors are, what, well, um, fashion, I don't know. <laughs> you know. So, <clears throat> okay, the kind of systems I'm going to talk um, from now on are systems with, this, with the extensive chaos. So, our systems like this one, a couple of map lattice, where if you, if you, uh, represent the level of exponents versus the index L, but normalized by the system size L, and then uh, these quantities between 0 and 1, and all your level of exponents are observed to fall quite approximately on, on top of a line. So when you increase the system size, your vectors, or your exponents, sorry, uh, tend to fill this, this line. So there's a, like a density of of level of exponents. So this is the kind of system called uh, okay, to, to, called to be uh, spatiotemporal chaotic or have really extensive chaos because the quantities like uh, the, the dimension of the attractor are extensive with the system size or the homogorophic uh, entropy these quantities are extensive with the system size because of this property. And, and okay, as examples, Beyond couple of lattices, you can I can cite the kuramoto sebasic equation, the complex ginsburg landau equation, or the Lorentz 96 model that I will present in short. Uh, here, okay, uh, I will also use uh, something called uh, the surface growth picture or representation that is due to uh, Michael Pikowski and Anthony Politi, where what they found is that if you take your first vector, I mean your most expensive vector, uh, this vector under this logarithmic transformation belongs to the university class of the Carver Paris sum equation. Okay, here I will uh, explain why this is this is like, like this. This is the uh, heuristic explanation of why of this correspondence. So as Arkady uh, Pikovsky and Tony said in the paper, mm -hmm. okay, if you take this as a reaction diffusion system with, a, with some periodic dynamics, um, if you want to know which is the, the dynamics of perturbations, you have to linearize. When you linearize your equation, you obtain this equation here, the diffusion, a multiplicative term here. And now if I make a Hopf-Kohl transformation, I mean, I take the logarithm of the perturbation, you obtain this equation below here, where you have uh, this additive term, a uh, nonlinear term, and this diffusion. 
And the form of this equation is, uh, is the same that this famous Carter Ferris precision equation, that is a uh, uh, um, prototypical equation of surface growth. Uh, Yeah, surface growth or surface roughness and for the dynamics of surface uh, of rough surfaces where, where here see actually is a noise and this comes here from from this uh, element here this is the linearization of F but uh, if U has a linear chaotic dynamics you can assume that this DS of U will be short range correlated you know, in both uh, space and, and time And this, this noise here will be white noise. Okay, so uh, if you add more terms here, okay, you, the, the terms will propagate here, I will, they will appear here, but uh, in the Carter precision equation, if you add more terms, say a, a four derivative or so, this, these terms are negligible in a renormalization group sense, because when you go at large uh, scales and large times, uh, they become negligible. So your, so your scaling loss are uh, due to these terms here. Okay. So now I will, I will show what you observe. I mean, this is the stochastic equation, the multiplicative stochastic equation with a an, with an noise. The one that if you make a, a Hopkins transformation gives you the, the Carter price and equation. And you see here that when you integrate this equation, you have a very much uh, uh, localized solution. And when you make the, if you only, if you plot this in log scale, then you see a lot of a structure that is hidden here, close to the zero. And with a chain of logistic maps, a couple of lattice, you will observe a very, pretty much the same. You will have a, a Lyapunov vector that is localized at some point. This is a snapshot. Of course, this, this is a dynamic localization. It changes, it changes with time. But if you make a snapshot, you will observe this. And when you make a, but if you see it to this in log scale, this will reveal a, something that is like a surface. Here, for instance, is the, for this stochastic equation, the result, and it's very much uh, the same. Not, not only in this uh, pictorial view, but uh, also in, uh, in the scaling loss that I will show in short. Also, uh, notice that by means of this, Uh, hot cold transformation, I mean a logarithmic transformation, the Lyapunov exponent of the system is nothing but the average velocity of the, of the surface. I mean, by this logarithmic transformation we are changing something that is growing uh, exponentially to something that is growing linearly because of the logarithmic transformation. So, for instance, if I take the, the average position of the surface, okay, you, will, you see that it's clearly, that this, if this is simplified exponentially, then is growing linearly. So we change a noise that is multiplicative but, but a noise that is additive. Mm -hmm. And we change the uh, exponential growth by linear growth plus fluctuation. Mm -hmm. This is somehow the, the rationale why this, this works. So, because, so in our work we now have investigated what happens for liberal vectors that are not the main one, but uh, vectors that correspond to Subleading level of exponents, level of exponents that are not larger. Than and okay, we, we made this in this couple of papers, and we study already uh, the characteristic level of vectors to see the difference we observe with, with respect to the backward level of vectors. And here there are some property. Uh, okay, here is again for a couple of lattice. We make the this P1 is the, the, the first level of vector. Okay, if he's plotted in log scale, so you see all this surface. And here is the second backward Lyapunov vector in red. And in this, the right panel, I'm showing the characteristic Lyapunov vectors. The, the, the first one, that is the same one that the B1 and G1 are the same vector, the characteristic vectors and the, and the backward vector. And the, for the large Lyapunov exponents are equivalent, and they are the same. But the second vector really depends on which set you choose. And if you choose the second vector here, you see that it localizes exactly at the same position where the first vector did. I mean, this is a snapshot, this is not occurred the whole time, but in an intermittent manner. And 
in this second panel, below the bottom panel, I show in the position of the maxima of the of the first 10 Lyapunov exponents. I mean, Lyapunov exponents for, for the first one to the third one. Yeah. Vectors. And here is the localization side. So for this one first, I take this point. And you see that in the, for the backward vectors, they are very much uh, scattered. Uh, uh, what is more or less uh, expected, because as you are in both, as these vectors are orthogonal, they cannot be localized in the same position. Otherwise, they would be almost collinear. They need to be orthogonal. However, the system, if you plot the, the characteristic one, you see that they, they have a strong tendency to clusterize. So there is, there is no one uh, region for its, uh, for its vector. This is somehow uh, different to what is expected from the expecting from the worst view of extensivity. You know? Maybe if you have read somewhere that extensive systems can be seen as many chaotic cells with uh, say two or three cells where you have some chaotic degree of mo mo degree of motion, another one, another one, and then when you increase the size of the system, you are included more, more chaotic uh, uh, cells. So that's why the system is uh, extensive. However, uh, and in fact, this was uh, this was uh, argued in some studies where they observed that the second vector was localized in a different position from the first vector, assuming that this was indication that of, of that this view was really uh, what was happening in the system. But if we plot the characteristic vectors, the vectors that are, I repeat, uh, intrinsic to the system, I and mean, they don't depend on the norm choice, but are purely dynamic, purely the intrinsic to the system, then you see that they really tend to cluster. So the system somehow is not exploring as many degrees of freedom as one would expect. OK, now, here you have okay, the couple map lattice. I want a couple map lattice. This is the 96 model I mentioned at the beginning. This is a toy model of the atmosphere. Uh, over here, it's a it's discrete in space but continuous in time. Okay, here okay. this is system is also is, uh, chaotic in space and time and, and extensive. And here is the minimal stochastic model. And you observe that if you compute the, the vectors and and now you subtract these two fields in low scale, then you observe these plateaus. What means that if you uh, work on log scales mm. with the logarithmic transformation for the vectors, then you can detect that the, the second vector, or the yeah. f vector, is a piecewise copy of the first vector, roughly. So there is a replication property in this particular uh, case. I mean, the the subdominant vectors really replicate the main one, but in different plateaus so that are different uh, heights. But the second vectors, I mean, you can even recognize by, by the, looking at the, at the figures. And the minimal stochastic, this is a stochastic model. That is the one that well, Akhari Pikovsky and Tulio Politi uh, uh, claim to be a minimal stochastic model for the main vector. It also works when, when you go to the, to, the, to the vectors beyond the, the first one. Here, in fact, uh, this is what we observe when we look at the spectra. Here is I'm summarizing what I have uh, telling, told during, during this talk. Here you have your vector and you make a logarithmic transformation. Now if, if I take this associated surface and make a, a Fourier <coughs> transform, here I have the power spectrum. So I can really compute the power spectrum. And for the first vector, as I uh, said to the beginning, it belongs to the university class of KPZ. Then the, this will scale us in this way. This is it's a power law with exponent minus 2. Uh, this exponent minus 2 corresponds to a surface that uh, has the shape of a random walk in one dimension. I mean, if you have a random walk in one dimension, uh, and you plot the, the, the path, when you make a Fourier transform, uh, you will get this kind of uh, real power spectrum. OK, now this is for the first vector. If now we go to vectors beyond the first one, uh, we obtain this. They are 
little as they are can be said up to some scale k sub n. Well, this is not surprising because I said at the beginning, uh, one transparency go that uh, these vectors are piecewise copies of the main vector. So the piecewise copies it means that up to a certain scale they are replicating the main vector. So that's why they are they they have the same uh, structure up to a some length scale. And only for the small k, small k, small wave number means large scale. At large scales, they are different. They have some different exponent minus mu. And here we detect a difference. For the characteristic vectors, you have this. For the bubble vectors, we have minus one, whereas characteristic Lyapunov vectors have this minus 1.2. This means that uh, characteristic Lyapunov vectors have uh, more information from distant parts of the system. And this, uh, this is uh, how you can view this, the fact that the exponent is, is higher in absolute value here. And if you, if you go to different systems, like a couple of Lattice, or Lorentz 96 model, or this minimal stochastic model, and you again make the log transformation, compute the power spectra, uh, and represent them, you will see again that for all these models, the first vector has this minus 2 uh, exponent, and for the other vectors, you have some crossover from minus 2 to an, a different uh, exponent. And this exponent is, for all these models, we measure they must be in the, in the range of minus 1.2, minus 1.15. Mm. Now I have uh, indications that this exponent, minus 1.15, is really uh, uh, the exponent uh, observed mm, in a big part of the of the of the spectra of the level of the spectrum. This means that um, the this exponent is not restricted to the most standard level of exponents, but to a, a higher um, range of, of exponents. I mean, for me, it was a surprise because I, at the beginning, I thought this exponent only was satisfied for the for the most standard. Uh, of exponents, but actually, it seems that it's more general than even what I expected. Okay. How do you fit them? Well, I fitted them and I put them, and then I put just a reference. Well, I can fit them as. Uh, you put some reference in the in the in the Lorentz case. In yeah. The it doesn't. I mean, it, it looks to me that this you're overestimating. I mean, it's, you're putting it to be. I mean. The, the difference is small I mean, between 1 and 1.15, 1. 1. so... No, no, well, okay, but you can see that this is higher than this one. No? Yeah. If you put minus 1 here, you will notice the difference. Yeah. No, no, I'm, 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 in fact, we have more recent results for even higher, for larger systems. The larger systems implies you have more decades to the left. And uh, I can show you that, in fact, this uh, exponent is really... Uh, very close to the thermodynamic limit of, of this system. Mm -hmm. The thermodynamic limit, this is not going to minus one. It's really a different uh, exponent. Okay, now uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the system that I think are of some interest for some of the audience. Uh, okay, I don't know. Well, some of the audience is very familiar with this, some part is not. Well, many of you will know that if you have a delay system like this one, okay, if you linearize, you have another delay equation. No, no, not a surprise. Okay, this u of v, of course, depends on time, of, because are the derivatives of this f, the first and the second argument. And you know that, uh, or some of you will know that these kind of systems are usually uh, represented in a, a space-time plot where you take your time, and you chop it in, in, uh, in sections of size tau. So you have a, a continuous space and a discrete time. In this sense, you, if time is going like this, it's coming like this, and then you jump, like this. So this, is like, this is very useful in many delay systems. Uh, OK, and, and what we did? It was to adapt the Wolf and Samuelson algorithm to the time delay systems. And we observed again that we could construct the Lepnoff surfaces. Now the Lepnoff surfaces extends from some time t to a time t plus tau, because tau now is the, the length of the system. 
And we observe the same properties that, that before. I mean, the, the, the vectors has a tendency to to cluster and, and, uh, or to localize at the same position. Here are the first three Lyapunov vectors. And if you subtract these fields, the surface I get also plateaus. Um, but even more information can, can be obtained if I, uh, if I plot the, the structure factors. And I again obtain the same results as before. The, the, the main vector is minus 2, the exponent for on top of the wave number here, because the main vector uh, belongs to the university class of the Carter Polysystem equation. This is something that also uh, academics can do in the, the first papers. We made some more measures just to, to assure this vector depends also to the, belongs to the university class. And for the next vectors, we observe that they, again they, are, they, they satisfy this exponent up to some length scale, and then it uh, Acquires a different slope that is again uh, close to 1.2, 1.15. So, in, in what we have measured, the, the lay systems we have exactly as uh, like uh, uh, extended systems, and they they are they have the same properties. And also, I will say some words about Hamiltonian lattices. It's another case we have investigated. We can do approximately the same. I mean, we can take a, a Hamiltonian lattice as the FPU model. It has this Hamiltonian where you have an interaction between neighbors that is not purely harmonic, that has this uh, interaction with a fourth power uh, and no local uh, potential. And you can plot the, the Lyapunov vectors, the lattice Lyapunov vectors, and you see that we can replicate somehow the, the, the picture that we had before. I mean, the, we can plot the surfaces, we have backward level vectors appear to be scattered along the system, while characteristic level vectors have a tendency to, to clusterize. We can also plot the power spectra. And now you see that the main vector has not a exponent minus 2, but minus 2.5. And the reason is that the main Lyapunov vector is not, does not belong, doesn't belong to the university class of the Carter Ferguson equation. This is supposed to be because there are some Hamiltonian lattices have uh, long range correlations in space and time. Um, okay, it's not clear to me which is the minimal model for this kind of system. In any case, not only the main vector has a different uh, value, but also the, the subleading uh, vectors have an exponent that is different from the one we did before. It was 1.15 or 1.2 approximately. Here we have an exponent that is clearly different, while the, the power level vectors have exponent that is, we'll say, closer to, to minus 2, as we as minus, to minus 1, as we obtain with the other systems. So, so, so this is also an indication that the minus 1 is somehow an spurious uh, exponent that appears just because you are analyzing, while this exponent is more uh, physics, and it's, it's more related to the physics of the, of the, of the problem. Okay. Um, so, okay, if we want to explain this result, we have to resort to a different minimal model of this one. Maybe we can put a, a long range correlated noise here, or we can introduce a second order derivative on time. I think, I don't know, well, I'll tell you because it's in the audience. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've thought more on this. Mm. Okay, we, we also can study this other computer lattice, the field 4 model has a harmonic interaction, but on the on-site potential is uh, has a double well. And also we see that the main level of vector has an exponent clearly different from minus 2. But uh, and also the, okay, the, the subleading vectors have an exponent that is different from minus 1.2. So in these vectors also, for this model, also you observe that the fact of being a Hamiltonian system has an effect on the, on the properties of the, of the vector. Okay, I now conclude. Just uh, simply to say that, okay, the level of exponents have been used a lot, but the level of vectors are still to be completely developed to take all the information from this from this object. Uh, now nowadays there are computer cap capabilities that allow really to explore uh, characteristic or covariant level of vectors in high-dimensional systems. Um, 
we use it mainly these vectors to to say or to verify what we can, information we can get from the university classes from from extensivity of five dimensional systems. Uh, to what extent you can construct uh, the composition of space-time fields, and also even if I know I didn't show this in the, in the stock, uh, this can be some, also some relevance for with these vectors in the to check the yeah, a microscopic foundation of statistical mechanics. Okay, and I think that's all. Thank you for your attention. in the presentation that Diego recently got a Ramonica Hall fellowship. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so any questions? Priority to question by students? No questions, Luis? So. <laughs> questions by Jan researchers? <laughs> so I think... <clears throat> so um, is there some way to understand why they are local copies of each other? Is there some intuition? Why it should be... Okay. Um, I have uh, thought on this. Um, it's not a clear. For this, not there is no a, a clear uh, answer. Um, okay. One has to notice that all these vectors uh, undergo the same. Uh, okay, let's look. Let's take this. Okay, if you take this equation here. This is the minimal stochastic model. You may first check that. I mean, all these vectors are going to obey the same equation. Uh, okay, so, so they all see the same, the same noise. And if you go to the, to the cover partisan equation, um, and it's written, okay, when I make this transformation from here to here, you see that, okay, if the, if the vector, if this exponent in this, or this, <coughs> this field, u, is positive everywhere, like here. This is the asymptotic solution of this, of this, of this multiplicative equation. Then you can make this transformation, and you recover the, the KPC equation. Now, if you look subtle solutions of this, of this equation, because uh, the level of vectors beyond the first one are like subtle solutions of this equation, for a given realization of the noise. It's a bit tricky, no? Mm -hmm. It's noise, but it's not... Uh, this is uh, somehow it's a noise that you know in advance, or is it going to be the future? Or? Then you cannot make the, the completely the, the, the half cold transformation because this field U is changing sign, sign in, the, in different measures, so have some zeros. Okay, in any case, this equation is the good equation for the first vector. The equations in this term for, for the H for the next vectors it's an equation that is very similar to this one, but here you have to add some terms due to some singularities. Here, because there are some zeros. Okay, this is very difficult. Uh, I don't know to what extent you can extract some information from there. In any case, you have this equation for the first vector. You have another equation like this one for the second vector, plus some term here. If you compute the term, uh, if you compute uh, a field like this one, eta, that is the subtraction of the first, surface, the first surface minus the second surface, uh, you will see that this uh, equation, the equation, the equation for for this field, eta, okay, is an equation that when you subtract h1 from h2, you subtract this noise, and you have an equation that admits admits a solution one flat surface. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, somehow. Mm, we say to say predict, but at least uh, you can understand that the solution is, is really there. Mm -hmm. That uh, the flat solution is there. In fact, uh, for instance, if you took, so if you take two different uh, initial conditions for the other present equations and let them evolve in time, and you just and you look at the subtraction of the two of the two surfaces, you will see also some uh, flat uh, regions for some time. But eventually they will collapse and then you will show a flat surf, a flat field in the whole uh, system. Here, as these are um, uh, subtle solutions, then the, the, the plateaus will, then that does not extend to the whole system. That's, that's restricted to some parts. But, okay.
<laughs> it's not a complete uh, response, but answer, but it's the best I can do. <laughs> Yeah. So the reasons in which uh, I mean chain signs are very tricky and then are... If you want to go to the foundation, I mean for chaotic system to change sign, there's no problem, but if you want to go to the minimal model, it really bothers a lot to have this change of set because then you cannot obtain an equivalent of KP set for the next vectors. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you go some slight point, I suppose. Yeah. So here you characterize um, these uh, vectors with this structure function, yeah. which is okay. But uh, is it possible also to calculate something like a cross correlation function? So multiply HM with say H1 or HM. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like uh, people do uh, cross correlations. Maybe it will also give you some. Yeah. Information about this plateau and just. Uh, yeah, if you think they are um, orthogonal or not. No, no, they are not orthogonal. Yeah. 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 No, but especially for year. You, so you mean hitting for year, no? Right. Yeah, so HM with HM. I mean, so. Because you know that there are some uh, way of, if you have two processes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, it's, uh, it's in cross correlation, so it's spectral form, cross spectrum, and it gives you, okay, at some maybe large scales, you have a large of similarities. So mm -hmm. I, I just am curious no, if I, I, I was was okay. Maybe it is worth maybe just looking at if maybe some information could be. Yeah, I cannot see if any advantage would obtain from this. Because, anyhow, you have this uh, data. So yeah, you can reproduce it. So it's, 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 uh, of course, it will be complex uh, no, valued function, but okay, you can take absolute values, so people do. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's anyhow. Yeah. I think we have not investigated more because we don't have a prediction for this form. Well, I don't know. Okay, it's okay. Yeah. I don't know. Well, maybe it's an indication. More questions? There are more, more questions. I have one. Uh, <coughs> it's uh, related to this KPZ uh, universality. So <coughs> the systems, the spatial temporal systems that you have studied, are both have the x minus x symmetry. What happens if you have, I mean, the leading terms instead of being quadratic, uh, second derivative is a first derivative, so you have a drift. Mm. What you think that this would affect the universality or? It doesn't. In fact, uh, if you look at the equations for the Rolling 96 model, there is some drift here, there is an equivalence. I mean, the direction of, of cell X interacts with the neighbors, but in an asymmetric way. Mm. Or if you think in a different way, if, if you take uh, Carter Parisian equation, I mean, another way to look at this, if you take uh, okay, this equation and you introduce some drift term, it will. Sorry. It will deal another drift term here, but these drift terms uh, do not affect the scaling of the uh, of the yeah, of the surface. But in principle, in the renormalization group uh, sense, I mean the lower derivatives are more important than the higher ones, right? No, but okay, if not well. This is not really the argument that you use to get rid of the. No, no, not, yeah, yeah, not, yeah, then you want one term below. Yeah. No, but if you have a. If you have this term is excluded by Galilean transformation. Mm -hmm. right? um, Galilean yeah. transformation. So if, if it's it's tilted, it's tilted, it's then tilted, you can yeah. make a transformation to reflect yeah. something like this. If, right. it's, if, if it's a very conditions, could, uh, it depends. Could play a role, I mean. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah. in the scaling regime, yeah, in the scaling regime, okay, okay, you, you forget the model. Yeah, in fact, there are the two possibilities. If you have, a, if it's a constant, like I say, then you make a, yeah, you go to a different uh, reference yeah. frame, and it's, it's so funny. If, if it's multiplied by some noise, it yields some diffusion as uh, as uh, an effective effect of this kind of, of terms. And also, in the end, it's logical with the delay cases. The delay case yeah, is a spatial representation. It's like 
if you have the drift. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So let's thank you speaker again.